thank you for your kind introduction. And it's an honor to be here and to present our work. Uh, the work of Morphotonics. Uh, we are a company in the Netherlands, in Eindhoven. And in this next presentation, I would like to uh, discuss whether large area nano imprinting is a valuable solution for the, really the mass manufacturing of AR waveguides. And when we say large area, we really mean large area. So beyond wafer scale. So last year we showed the replication of 120 waveguides on a Gen 3 and half size. So from one master, we make an upscaled master, a 30 up, which we replicate at four different wafers, square wafers. And this is, these are high refractive index wafers replicating in high refractive index resins, 1.9. This year, we like to show a 9-up replication on Gen 5 size. So in this case, we are making 270 waveguides in one single imprint pass. Yeah. And we believe that this is the pass forward yeah, to the mass manufacturing if the quality is good. And this is what we'd like to discuss today. But first, about our imprint technology. As mentioned, we use a roll-to-plate imprint method. That means that by use of a roller, we press a flex stamp on the substrate with the resin in between. The texture on the flex stamp is transferred into the resin. The resin is solidified, and you can immediately delaminate the flex stamp again. And the nice thing is that the flex stamp can be reused again and again and again. So it's a, a fast process method. And you can think of a reuse, uh, our customers reuse it uh, over a thousand times. Um, and that's because um, for our flex stamps, it has a special anti-stick uh, uh, properties, and this is an own designed um, yeah, uh, flex stamp material set. In this case, we have a line pressure, and this line pressure is scalable. And that makes uh, that we align to the display logic. So we can increase the throughput by scaling the substrate size. And, but that can also be that you replicate in multiple wafers in one imprint. So here in the movie, I th uh, is there a pointer? No. Here in the movie, you can see, for instance, that we replicate at the nine individual substrates placed on a carrier. And then each of the substrates look like the third picture. We use our own flex stamp materials. For the resin materials, we align with best the market. Uh, we, for instance, work together with Pixelligent, and we have our own in-house master upscaling method. But at the end, it's all about quality. If the quality is not good enough, um, then it will not fly. So you will have to have the highest field of view, the highest contrast uh, to, in order to get the longest battery lifetime, and all at an affordable cost. So therefore, in this work, we want to show the replication quality and the reproducibility. And the reproducibility in imprint runs, but also across the area. And to do this, we teamed up with <coughs> several pioneering companies. So companies, uh, Lightrans, which is a design company, they were willing to, to design uh, one color, one deep pupil expansion um, design, a straightforward one, using uh, blaze gratings and binary gratings with varying track pitches. Nilt did the master, so they provided the master. We did uh, the upscaling, we used the glass of shot, uh, the real view glass, and in this case, uh, Schott provided squared glass. We can replicate on round glass, that's not an issue, but using squared glass, then you can further enhance the throughput. There are more waveguides fit on squared glass. Uh, as mentioned, we use the resin of Pixelligent, and the company OptoFidelity, they did the analysis, uh, the functional test on the waveguides. And it's really a pleasure to work together with, uh, with all these companies because you learn a lot from each other. Uh, you, you, you better understand what you are making and what the specs are. 
So OptiFidelity, they told us that they could uh, roughly characterize, well, initially five samples. We pushed them a little bit, yeah, so they characterized nine samples. And with these nine samples, we wanted to determine the large area imprint uh, quality, and so over the larger area, the Gen 5 area, as well as um, imprints make, made in a uh, recurring run, uh, each time reusing the flex time. So we made 100 imprints, and we checked the quality of the first, the 11th, the 50s, the 70s, and the 100th, and, uh, 100th imprint. And then we asked OptiFidelity to look at the MTF data, the contrast data, as well as the pitch variation. So here are the contrast data. And well, first what you see is, is that the optical design as designed by Lightrans fits nicely with the, uh, the manufactured waveguide. Um, so that it's darker in the right corner and this is also what we obtained. Please be noted that Lightrans was asked for to make a straightforward design. It's not the best design. It's, it's not the most, it's a holo, yeah, similar HoloLens one design for a green color. That also makes that the uh, um, contrast data is roughly around eight, but we are all interested in the reproducibility. How stable is our imprint process? And then you can see from this data that the contrast variation is in, within one percent, percent that is on absolute numbers, uh, uh, eight. Uh, and the luminance uniformity has a variation of two. If you look at the MTF uh, data, which is telling you whether there are differences in uh, disturbances, uh, so how well small uh, features are still readable or are blurred out, then you can see that the um, quality, again, remains stable over the uh, nine imprints, so over the larger area as well as over the uh, reproducibility run. There is one data which you could say it um, differs. Uh, we have not checked this waveguide yet, but it can also be due to handling or simulation. If you look at the track pitch variation, then uh, uh, we have a quite stable uh, a production and we this is enabled by the use of a special flex stamp designs. So our stamps, you can imagine, they, they stretch, they uh, might expand if the temperature raises, but we can control this. So we can we use a special flex stamp design, which we call high dimensional stability uh, stamp, which has a very low expansion coefficients. And then you can see, but using this flex stamp, that the pitch variation remains stable, uh, stable within an imprint. Uh, we have roughly 10 picometer variation over an expander or uh, outcoupler. And over the nine imprints, we have roughly um, 20 picometer variation, which is fairly good for 100 imprints made one after each other in a row. The last topic or one of the uh, additional things we looked at is the residual layer thickness. The residual layer thickness is very important. Yeah, for variations, it's, it's the layer thickness itself that gets absorbed, but it's also the variations in the residual layer thickness which can uh, yeah, uh, uh, leak light. We used a an, an high refractive index resin which has a high viscosity, uh, the, uh, 570 uh, centipas, and therefore we uh, imprinted a residual layer thickness of 4.6 micron. If you look across the waveguides, uh, the different waveguides, um, there is a variation of 5% in the residual layer thickness. And this is, this is a fairly fair number for nano imprinting. It's standard, 5% 5, 5 is, a, is a good number. But it's not good enough for, um, for AR waveguides, for the AR application. So we are developing this, uh, but then we have to look into different materials. Um, and we are doing this. So at the uh, upper right corner, you see a replication on a, on a wafer where we achieve a layer thickness of 90 nanometers uh, with a variation of 10 nanometers. 
In this case, it is not uh, the 1.9 high refractive index uh, resin, but it's solvent-free, so it's a solvent-free resin. We did similar tests on the large Gen 5 size. Uh, we, we earlier uh, shared this uh, information. And there on the Gen 5, we had a layer thickness uh, of 150 nanometer with a variation of 35 uh, nanometer. So we see a path forward to further improve on the layer thickness and layer thickness variation. The nice thing about our technology is that we can replicate all kinds of optical elements. So you can think of 3D lenses. You can think of um, wire grid polarizers. Um, and certainly also slanted gratings. So we have replicated slanted gratings with an angle up to 50 degree. For a different angle, so it's not a 50 degree angle, it's a, it's a smaller angle, we did also an, again, a reproducibility test. So we looked for 100 imprints and we compared the first and the hundredth imprint on uh, the slant angle. And then we noticed almost no variation in the slant angle, meaning no statistical uh, significant uh, difference. It's roughly maybe a one degree variation. Um, also nice to know that with our technology, we also can replicate different slant, uh, slanted gratings, for instance, two which are opposed to each other or even on a slight angle. Having this freedom replicating all different kinds of optical textures also gives you opportunity to replicate Fresnel lenses. And Fresnel is uh, the SPI AR, but also the VR, the MR, the conference, uh, the Fresnel lenses might be interesting. Um, this is a, a Fresnel lens which we replicated for Seisenbacher in the, in the Fabulous project. It's not used by v, for VR, but it's a nice design of what we can, or a nice example of what we can replicate. As the last slide with data, uh, this is a, a an possibly interesting um, slide because for the first time we share that we are working on uh, a new tool which has aligned imprinting. So we understand the need for, for instance, dual-sided augmented uh, reality waveguides. Uh, but also for other applications, this can be interesting. And therefore, we are developing a tool. Currently, it's, it's Gen 3 size, or 600 by 600 millimeter, where we have an overlay accuracy of around 3 micron. That means that if you have our stamp, then we can position the texture on a micro LED pixel or an, on, on a marker with an accuracy of 3 micron. And the first results, the tool will be available at the end of this year. The first results show that we, yeah, that, that, that it works. Eh? So you see the over 15 imprints of variation of three micron. So to conclude, in this presentation, I wanted to show that large area is a valuable route for the mass manufacturing of AR waveguides. And yes, this is possible. The replication quality is good. The reproducibility is good. Uh, layer thickness, there is a path forward to further reduce it. With this technology, we can replicate any optics, uh, as, as shown, the blaze gratings, the diffractive gratings, the, the slanted gratings, the, the finale lenses, but also higher textures. We can do it for any display. You can think of an AR, AR waveguide, but you can also think of a head-up display, or maybe smartphones, or any, any display. And we can do this at large sizes, at Gen 5 sizes. This is one by one by 1.5 meter. It's a scalable technology, uh, and therefore, yes, a higher throughput is certainly possible. Our tools are in the field, so customers are using our tools to make commercial pr uh, production. And you can think in this case of applications like 3D, uh, cover glass, and also augmented reality. And this is the last slide. I really would like to thank the team within Morphotonics, which worked hard on all the results, but also our partners, SlideTrends, Nilt, OptiFidelity, and uh, Short and Pixelligent. Thank you for your attention. <laughs>